today on Inspiration for the Day. Join Pastor Phil Keaton as he shares a noun word that will speak to your spirit. Aren't you glad today that the Lord is still showing you the keys to the kingdom? Aren't you glad today the Lord is still opening the doors to the kingdom? And prisoners are being set free today by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got news for you. I know who can set a person free from addictions in their life. His name is Jesus. And if you'll just come to Jesus, you'll find that he's got the keys that will open up the prison that you have made for yourself. And he will set you free. And him who the Son sets free, he is free indeed. Give the Lord a praise for freedom. Aren't you glad your Redeemer lives? Amen. Revelations 1, 5, and 6. And for Jesus Christ, Amen. who is the faithful witness, the firstborn from the dead, that means he's the first one that was resurrected from the dead, never to die again, and the ruler of the kings of the earth, to him who loves us and has freed us from our sins, by his blood. Amen. And made us to be a kingdom of priests to serve his God and Father. To him be glory and power for how long? Forever, Forever and ever. Forever and ever. Amen. Amen. So, he's washed us and cleansed us with his blood. He's redeemed us. Amen. That means that we are his. He paid a price for us. How many of you know when you go out and buy something and you pay for it, it's yours? Amen. 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 So when you pay for it, it means you can go ahead and enjoy it. Amen. And how many of you know the Lord has paid for every sin you've ever committed? Yeah, Aren't you thankful that he's been faithful and true? Aren't you thankful that he's been a friend that sticketh closer than a brother? He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you, but I will go with you always even unto the end of the world. So we know the Lord is with us through everything. And you know our hearts go out to the people who are suffering today, but we know the Lord is going to be with them. Some of them, of course, will see Jesus in heaven. But you know what? That faith is going to sustain them, just like it sustains us every day. And God's strength, God's mighty power, for they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their what? Strength. strength. They shall mount up with wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. And so when we look at this statement, my Redeemer lives, you know, Job, who was actually the first book of the Bible, Job was written even before Genesis. And Job, when he was going through every thing that he was going through, he said, you know, I've been through these things, but I know my Redeemer lives. Yes. And in the last days, I shall see him. Yes. Amen. So you see, God's strength is able to get us through anything. Now, he's also the one who has the keys of the kingdom. And he's given them to us. And he said, what sort of things you bind on earth will be bound in heaven? What sort of things you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven? So you can go ahead and start rejoicing. Amen. Because he is alive and alive forevermore. Amen. I got news for you today. The Lord is here to let you know that you are his possession. Amen. I'm, I belong to Jesus. And it's all because of Jesus I'm alive. It's all because of Jesus I sing. It's all because of Jesus I rejoice. Because of what he's done for me. How many of you know he's done something for you in your life? How many of you are rejoicing today? Because of the power of the gospel of Christ. So you see, John, the revelator, was on the Isle of Patmos. They had banished him, you know, according to church tradition. They tried to boil him, but they couldn't get rid of him that way. So they said, we know what, we're going to put you on an island where you can't, uh, where you can't tell anybody about the Lord. And according to church history, he's the only disciple that lived to be over 100. In fact, most of them were martyred. But John, the revelator, Amen. he said, I was in the spirit of the Lord's day. Hallelujah. Amen. How many of you know he could have a conversation with God? Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Doesn't matter where you're at in your life, you can always have a conversation with God. Amen. I had old song, let us have a little talk with Jesus. Amen. 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 Makes it right. Oh, yeah. Well, you know, when you have a talk with Jesus, a conversation, things begin to happen. He said, I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard behind me the sound of a trumpet. 
And Peyton Turner, that's how seven gold candlesticks. And in the midst of the seven gold candlesticks, one like unto the Son of Man, clothed with a garment down his foot, he girt about the path with a golden girdle. His head and his hair were white like wool, as white as snow. And his eyes were as a flame of fire, and his feet as a divine, fine brass that burneth in a furnace. And his mouth was as the sound of many waters. In his right hand he had seven stars, seven churches of Asia Minor. And he said this was the revelation that he wanted to give to you so that you would have who he is. And he said about this one that he saw, he's the Alpha and the Omega. Yes. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. He who is, he who was, and who he was, will ever be to come. How many of you know that means he's the eternal one? Amen. Hallelujah. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word was with God. And the Word was God. Amen. All things were created by Him. And without Him was not anything made that was made. In Him was what? Life. And that life was the what? The light of men. And in Him there is no darkness. The darkness came against Him. But He couldn't comprehend Him. It couldn't conquer Him. How many of you know light overcomes darkness? Amen. Amen. You go into a dark room. I tell you what. You better know where the vacuum cleaner is located. <laughs> Amen. You better remember where that vacuum cleaner is. Because if you don't, and it's too dark, Lord knows, you can have a problem, can't you? You can do a flip up of the vacuum. Amen. But you know what? Praise God, all you got to do is have some light, and you can see it. And you can avoid the obstacles, can't you? Thy word is a lamp unto my feet, and a light unto my path. Aren't you thankful for the Word of God today? Amen. The Word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two edged sword. Oh, yeah. Piercing through the division of the soul and the spirit of the joint and the marrow as a discerner of the very thoughts and the intents of our hearts. God knows your heart. Mm -hmm. And He said the Word of God is coming in there to do surgery on you. Mm -hmm. And the reason is because if there's something in your life that's trying to steal the joy, you need to get rid of it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Jesus said, I've come that you might have joy and your joy might be complete. Paul said, it's joy unspeakable and full of glory. David said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. So you see, when we get our eyes on the Lord then all at once, that helps our joy to begin to, to be revealed to us. You know, the joy is not like happiness. Happiness depends on what's happening. But joy depends on your walk with God and you draw it from the wells of your salvation. Yes. Amen. How many of you know God never runs out of water? Oh. Yes. Thank you, Lord. Would you just thank Him for being a well that doesn't run dry? Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. Oh, yes. Serve the Lord with gladness, the Bible said. Come before His presence with singing. Rejoicing. He likes to see you rejoice. Amen. How many of you like to rejoice? Paul said rejoice and I said in rejoice. He said, I, I want you to have not just a, a blessing. I want you to have a double blessing. Amen. How many of you are going to receive your double blessing today? Amen. The Lord wants you to receive that double blessing. I come in to bless the Lord, not to get a blessing, but I do get a blessing when I bless the Lord. Amen. Amen. How many of you know that as you bless him, as you think about him, as you meditate on who he is, then that revelation comes to you. Wow. I'm the first and the last, he says. And then you begin to start thinking about how that God is working throughout the world today. You know, we are in the dispensation of the church, the time period of the church. It's called the church age. And God is using the church to... Reach the world with the gospel of Jesus. And you know, I've been hearing about uh, my brothers and sisters all over the world today. Yes. We're praying for each other. We're praying peace. Peace on earth. Remember what the angels, when the Lord came, they said, Behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be unto you this day. For in the city of David is a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. You know, the Savior has come. How many of y'all know the Holy Spirit has also come? 
He said there were seven spirits. In other words, the Holy Spirit working in the seven churches. That represent all churches, really. And John said that when he saw the Lord high and lifted up, like Isaiah, and his train filled the temple. John saw it. Now, when he had this vision, he, he heard the trumpet. It was a type of like the Lord's return back to earth. And he heard that sound of the trumpet. How many of you are listening for that sound today? I'm listening for that trumpet sound. Amen. And he said, when I saw him, he said, I fell at his feet as dead. Now, he was overwhelmed. Now, some people say, well, you know, over at y'all's church, you know, people sometimes, y'all pray for them, and they just fall out. We had one lady, she was a nurse, and somebody fell out in the spirit, and she said, is anybody going to help that woman? Of course, we knew she didn't need help because she was just enjoying the, the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've seen many people fall out under the power of the Holy Spirit. Well, John fell out. He said, I fell at his feet as dead. I've seen people, when they fall out, some people kind of go gradual, but some people just, <laughs> amen. And we have to try to get our catchers up here, amen. <laughs> try to make it a little bit easy on them when they go, go. But see, they're overwhelmed. That's what's happening. It's like they're, they're so touched by the presence of God, they're just overwhelmed by the glory of God. And people say, well, I don't really believe in that. Well, then, you know, that's your prerogative. But the person who did, they believe in <laughs> And it is scriptural because it happened right here. John fell at his feet as dead. But then he said that the Lord laid his right hand on me and said, fear not. I am he that liveth and was dead. But behold, I am alive forevermore and I have the keys to death, hell, and the grave. Amen. Amen. He said, I got the keys, John. Amen. I know you've been banished. I know you're on an island all by yourself. I know there's nobody else around. But me and you are about to have an encounter. Hallelujah. He said, I didn't forsake you. I've been with you all the time. Everything you've been through, John. And John says, yes, Lord, I remember with the Last Supper when, when I was leaning up against you and you began to share the principles of the kingdom. And the Lord is still sharing His kingdom with you and with John and with me. Aren't you glad today that the Lord is still showing you the keys to the kingdom? Aren't you glad today the Lord is still opening the door that have been locked and prisoners are being set free today by the power of the gospel of Jesus Christ. I got news for you. I know who can set a person free from addictions in their life. His name is Jesus. And if you'll just come to Jesus, you'll find that he's got the keys that will open up the prison that you have made for yourself and he will set you free. And him who the Son sets free is free indeed. Give the Lord a praise for freedom. Lord Jesus. Oh, yes, Lord. I want to praise you. Oh, yes. He's the one who overcame everything. Oh, he is the lion of the tribe of Judah. You know, the first time he came as a lamb to be slain. But you see, John saw him also now in his glory. Think about it when he saw the Lord in this brightness. The glory of the Lord. You see, as you worship the Lord, His glory begins to be revealed to you more and more and more. You can go higher and higher with the Lord. How many of you like to go on top of a mountain and look out? Amen. Oh, praise the Lord. You get up on top and you look out and you see the sky and you're like, wow, God. And then you take one of those good old wine sap apples. Take a big bite. And say, oh, thank you, Lord, for this day. Amen. You smell that coffee brewing? Amen. And you get out and you look out and you say, wow, Lord, you're an awesome God. Hallelujah. How many of you know he's an awesome God today? Our God is an awesome God. Amen. Oh, he's awesome. And he's, 
He will help you to understand that you are more than a conqueror because he's more than a conqueror. So you don't have to live underneath the, the circumstances. You can begin to rise up and challenge the circumstances and say, God, with your strength, with your mighty power, I'm more than a conqueror through him who loves me. You overcame death, hell, and the grave. Hallelujah. And I want you to know, Jesus Christ, that's what he was doing those three days. Hallelujah. As he had gone up from that cross to that first Sunday morning, he was going and he was taking the keys. Amen. And he was sharing the good news with all those that had been waiting for the Messiah. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. You know, as we think about our Messiah this morning, it warms our hearts, doesn't it? Yeah. Just to think of him, to behold him. Aren't you glad? That he has revealed himself to you. You know this book is called Revelation. Aren't you glad you've got a revelation of Jesus? How many of you have got a personal revelation of Jesus today? Hallelujah. You see I met Jesus. Hallelujah. And I'm glad he's been patient with me sometimes. I know he hasn't had to be patient with you. But he's had to be patient with me. But you know. <laughs> Oh, I like that. Oh, sounds as great as our faithfulness. Yes. Oh, God, our Father. Oh, yes. He's been faithful and true. He's there for you every step of the way. And all you need to do is look up. Look into the hills from whence cometh my help. My help cometh from the Lord, maker of heaven and earth. Look under the hills. David looked up and he said, I know the one above the hills is looking down on me. How many of you know his eye is on the sparrow? Amen. He knows when that sparrow falls and hits the ground. And I know he cares for me. How many of you know he has the hair on your head number? Amen. And for some of us, he doesn't have to count his bar. Amen. Amen. <laughs> but you know, <laughs> <laughs> He's been faithful. Amen. And that just shows that he knows everything. And sometimes we don't feel like that, though. Sometimes we feel like, Lord, you don't understand. This is what I'm going through right now. Mm. And, you know, we all know the Lord does, but intellectually, but emotionally, mm -hmm. sometimes we need to feel mm. somebody be the hand of the Lord extended out to us. Mm. Aren't you glad that he extended out his hand to you one day? Mm -hmm. And he said, come. And you responded. And when you responded, he held you in his arms of love. Uh -huh. And he carried you all the way through. You know, I think about John as he's in this situation. And I think about how the Lord began to minister to him. And how John was then able to write this <coughs> book of revelation. From what he received on his Isle of Patmos. Think about it. He penned down these words and he wrote them so that we can know the glory of this Savior. You know, John is also the one who spoke about in the beginning was the Word, the Logos, the cosmic power of the universe. And he was the one who could show not only is he the one who came down to this earth, but he's also the one who is up in heaven and the one who is going to come down again. Hallelujah. And that's why he gave us the book of Revelation so that we can know about end times. And in the book of Daniel, you have to bring them together because you can only understand Revelation as you understand the book of Daniel. Because Daniel got the Revelation about 500 years before. But aren't you glad today to know that God has His people that know that we can trust in the Lord because we don't know how certain battles are going to turn out, but we know who's going to win the war. Amen? Hallelujah. Aren't you glad you know that He's King of kings, Lord of lords? No weapon formed against Him will prosper. You can rejoice today because your destiny is sealed. Hallelujah. I've been sealed by the Holy Spirit. Oh, I've been sealed by the power of God. And I got news for you today. I know my brothers and sisters who are suffering can draw from God's mighty resources. Yes, my heart goes out to them. My prayers of intercession go out to them. And you know, it seems like with us knowing everything that goes on in the world, there's always something going on in the world. But you know what? I'm glad to know that Jesus Christ has our destiny under control. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. 
This world is going to become the kingdoms of our God and of his Christ. Jesus Christ is going to come and rule and reign because he said in this world you have wars and rumors of wars. Be not deceived, he said, for many will come in my name saying, I am Christ. There will be a false prophet, false Christ. But aren't you glad to know that your faith is in the Christ, the Lion of the tribe of Judah? Oh, hallelujah. Oh, sweet rose of Sharon. My faith is in the one and the only. And when another comes in saying he's Christ, I'm going to say you're a liar. Amen. You didn't resurrect from the grave, but I know one who did. Hallelujah. His name is Jesus of Nazareth. And I don't care who you say you are. Hallelujah. I know who the Christ is. I'm like Peter. When, when Jesus said, who do men say that I am? Well, some say you're John the Baptist. Some say you're Jeremiah raised from the dead. But he said, well, who do you say that I am? He said, you are the Christ. Amen. The Son of the living God. I have a conviction inside of my heart. I've got a revelation of Jesus, amen. And I know you've been talking to Jesus. Every person here, I believe, today has already been talking to Jesus this week, amen. You say, well, what if there's somebody who don't know the Lord? How many of you know some people who don't know the Lord still talk to Jesus? This man right here, when his two daughters got burned, He called on the name of Jesus before he actually knew him as his personal Lord and Savior. His daughter got burned, one daughter of his twins. And you know what? You see her today. She's a wonderful young lady and recovered fully. And thank God for all those in the hospital that helped her. But you know, dad was over there praying for his little girl. He said, but he wasn't following the Lord. No, he wasn't following the Lord. But he needs some help. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. How many of you know that God has been beside you even when you weren't beside him? Yeah. Yeah. Even when you weren't thinking about him, he was thinking about you. He had the hair on your head numbered even when you were running from him. Even when you didn't want to hear anybody talk about Jesus. Somebody come to you talking about Jesus, you ran. <laughs> but one day, one day, Jesus knocked on your door. And he said, come on home. Come on home. And you heard that voice. And you said, what I really need to do is turn it over to Jesus. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. I need to turn it over. To the creator of this universe. I need to turn it over to the risen Christ. Because I know he's my redeemer. Amen. He's your redeemer too, isn't he? Amen. Amen. He redeemed you. He redeemed me. But I've got that personal relationship with him. Just like you do. And when I call upon the name of Jesus, I know the Father hears me when I call. Amen. Amen. When I speak the name of Jesus, the Father is in attention. Amen. When people mention my daughter's name, oh, Daddy starts listening really good. You talking about who? <laughs> and Jesus is the Father's only begotten Son. The first of many. Now there's many sons and daughters because of what He did. For you. One song says, You did it all for me. Each drop of blood was shed for me, even me. When the Savior cried out his head and he died, praise the Lord, he did it all. Hi, I'm Pastor Phil, and I'm so excited to be coming to you today as I was reflecting upon what David said in Psalms 8. When I consider the heavens, the moon, and the stars which thou hast ordained, what is man that thou art mindful of him, or the son of man that thou visitest him? When you think about it, the creator of this universe came down to walk where you walk, so he could walk with you through every situation in life. 
David also said, the Lord is my shepherd. And truly the Lord is our shepherd because as he walks with us, he begins to open things up to us and to bring us into green pastures and still waters. And he reveals things in the spirit to us that help us in our daily lives. So, you know, as God helps you to connect with others and to be able to share in walking with him, let's rejoice today because the good shepherd takes us from here to all eternity.